Hi everybody, welcome to Rambling Toffee. Um, I'm Mark. I hope everybody has had a wonderful new year. Um, getting through all the miserable weather out there and really cold and everything else. So um, if you are, I'm doing something new at the moment for the, the podcast. Um, I'm also doing a video as well, simultaneously. So if you are watching this video and not listening to it on the podcast as per normal, um, you might see in the background it looks like a bit of a mess. It's in my spare room. And um, yes, hopefully it'll be cleared at some point. So be a little bit more f fresh and a little bit more um, easy on the eye because it looks like a bomb site hit it basically. But there we go. So at this moment, I just want to say yet again, welcome uh, to, uh, to the Rambling Toffee podcast. Um, I hope, uh, you know, your new year is going well as it possibly can do. Um but being an Evertonian at the moment, well, nothing changes really. Um, as you can guess, a few weeks ago, we were coming off four wins on the on the bounce. Everything was positive in the garden and rosy. And we were just really enjoying the performances that we were getting from the team. Um, it seemed to have clicked. Um, obviously, since then, you know, injuries have come in, suspensions have come in. Um, and basically... The amount of games that we've had over December. I know Sean Dyche has actually said something um, in the press regarding too many games over December. It needs to be spread out more. Um, I expect, you know, for for not just for Everton, for, for all clubs really, because there's just so much football. I couldn't believe the amount of football that we had. We had a, obviously a Carabao Cup competition as well, uh, an opportunity to get to the semi final, and all the effort was put into that. and it was it was just um you know it just we'll get going somewhere we were going getting gaining momentum gaining confidence as a team um but the the frim the squad so thin bare uh, thin and you know the players that we have on the bench you know are they good enough can they come on and actually make an impact can they come in and actually challenge the players that we currently have um in the team to actually come and make a statement and and, and take up the opportunity that they have in those games that they've had the opportunity to have that it's not worked out for them or they've not performed well it's like Dan Juma as one as an example you know we've we've brought in good old Michael Keane again you know um in one of the games and you know he did well against for Burnley obviously when needed because of course with suspensions to Jared Bamfweight and you know uh, and we he came in we've got Godfrey played the formation, it worked, and his performance was really good and he scored. But then we saw the other side of it when we played the five against Wolves, and he's he's not a Premier League player anymore. I think personally, it's just my personal view, I think he needs to move on whenever that will happen. I don't know why Sean Dice has this fascination with him um, to keep on playing him. I know you talk about experience and all the rest of it, but week in, week out, when he has played, he's consistently always made errors. You know, in yes, in, and it's very few and far between where we get a performance from him like we did against Burnley. So, and the fact that, you know, Sean Dice decided to go with a five against Wolves and we, you know, and the players playing a system that they don't play that often. And as much as, and he had a few days, and this is again is about the amount of games that have been played, and obviously he's doing it to try and you know to keep you know keep the performance going, keep playing well the way that we are and the way well the way that we have been playing, but you know it didn't work, and you can see the legginess, you can see the tiredness. You know, the energy and effort that they're putting in. And this is, you know, we can be critical of the team. And I've been critical of Michael Keane there as an example. But he's been put in a situation where they played a five at the back and they, they wanted to use, you know, your left and right backs to be more wing backs. And it was against a team of Wolves who were playing well at the moment. And they got, the you know, and they deserved the performance. They deserved what they, the, the result that they got. You know, and they, you know, and for that, that's, how it is and we had to come back we had the fa cup game obviously it was an opportunity and what does he do he reverts back to the similar system that we've been playing for a long length of time and 
he changed it. He brought Dan Juma in. He brought, you know, um, he brought James Coleman back in. And it was, and, and the goalkeeper as well, gave Pickford a bit of a rest. And it was a good performance. It was workmanlike. It was back to what we've seen and what they can do on the field, um, you know, what they've been doing of late. And it, that was the positive shine from from that. You know, we, we had opportunities to win that game last night. And I digress anyway. So I mentioned, you know, Dan Juma has come on and had opportunities in games in, and he's just never taken them. Um, he played well in, at, at Spurs when he came on. He, he made a little bit more of an impact. So there was an opportunity there. And, you know, it's, that opportunity is going to come to him more now because of the injury to Dwight McNeil. I digress. I, I, I speak about the game last night. But, yeah, what what is actually going on at the moment? You see, for me, you know, I want to come on here, talk about the football, and I will do, we'll talk about the Palace game last night. But with the incident that happened last night in that game, and the incidents that happened in the Man City game, the Tottenham game, and also the Wolves game, something I didn't see or didn't get until later on that, you know, that Dwight McNeil got an arm put round him um, in the game, nothing happened. VAR can see that. Could have told the referee if the referee didn't see it. Nothing happened. And again, this is it's happened twice now. We had the incident after Chelsea game where Chelsea player, Palmer, I can't remember which one it was, the player was, went up to, I think, was it Anana? And basically, no, uh, Nathan Patterson, and did exactly the same thing, put his arm around him, trying to strangle him. And again, well, on that occasion, he said, oh, there was nothing to answer to it. So nothing, nothing happened. So I'm thinking, what? That you know, that's threatening. That's strangling someone. If you do that on the street, you'll be arrested and taken in, taken into custody for doing something like that and attempted murder if you're trying to kill someone. But then you did that, but nothing happened again. And this is. This is the frustrating thing. And basically, I come on here and I do my podcast week in, week out. And basically, every time I'm talking about, I want to talk about Everton, talk about the stadium, talk about the takeover that's still ongoing. If it's going to happen or not, I don't know. I want to talk more about that, yes. But I want to also talk about the team and the performance and how we're playing. But I'm always talking about VAR calls, decisions. Bad decisions by referees week in, week out. And it's getting to a point that I said on social media last night, and I'll go into that game in a minute about the performance and everything else, but I'll go into what happened with Dominic Calvert-Lewin and that sending off. But the game's gone. I've been supporting Everton since 1983, before we were great in the league, winning t- titles and winning in Europe and having a great football team and a big club and, a, you know, everything about them. And I've been absolutely privileged to be able to see that team. You know, I've been absolutely, in fact, absolutely, one, you know, it's been great to be able to actually have that opportunity. And also if, you know, also winning the FA Cup in 95 and the Joe Road Dogs Award team and, the David Moyes period of time as well, and having growing up as an Everton fan, all it's always been about is football and it, what you see on the field, the game, it's sport, it's competitive, it's everything you want. I played football for years. I got so much out of it. And for years and years and years, we never talked about the referee and the referee's decisions that were made. It was never ever any conversation in the pub or in the bar or in the ground or wherever it may be at home or out with your mates talking about the games it was always about how your team played and basically what we got we come to now and it you know yes there's always errors by referees before VAR came in there was always errors Week in, week out, same scenario. We moaned about it. We couldn't do anything about it. But we move on. But it seems to have crept in more and more since VAR has come in and is being used as a technology to make things easier for the referee on the field. 
to make it easy for, you know that decisions that are put out there from sending offs from you know offside decisions the best thing that is working is the goal line technology that's worked perfectly and you know buzzer goes in there you go got to go that's eradicated that issue but offside decisions you know when somebody's been booked and it should have been really been a wreck it's supposed to be a helpful tool the person in a box in Stockley Park, somewhere down the road, somewhere miles away, can get into the ear of the referee and go, um, I think you got that one wrong. I think that person should be sent off. Come and have a look at the screen and I'll guide you through what I think. And what they have is what we have when we're watching the TV. is slow motion. We can see it all in action. It's slowed down. So when you see it that way, it looks different. It looks bad. It looks like, oh, that's, is that, is that a sentence? And you start doubting yourself. But what actually has to happen is VAR, it's got to be there if it's an obvious error. It's on the field, it's obviously wrong. And but what also, ha you know, and they go to, oh, well, we think this. That referee should go back to him and, oh, my, I, well, I think that's that's not a foul. I let play go on. I'm letting that be. And then it's accepted. Then they can have their little to-dos afterwards and say, well, I think I'm right. It should be the referee on the field. The referee last night, Colin Kavanagh, how many de bad decisions he's made for Everton over the last two, three years? We, 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 I can go. I can spend hours talking, you know, Manchester United game, and you other getting all different games that have taken place over the the Tarkovsky when he was at Burnley, the foul on uh, Richarlison, and um, the penalty obviously for Man City. God, you know, which we should have had. He was who was the manager? Who was the actual official? Colin Kavanagh. And you've got Craig Pawson. And this is the worst thing. I can know names of referees. I don't want to know the names of the referees. Why do... That's not... I'm not a fan of a referee. I'm a fan of the football team. So why is that the case? Why do I have to, when I'm talking on this podcast, want to talk about the Blues and how they're doing, even if we're losing and having a good moan about how bad we're playing or whatever else? That's what I want to talk about. And I can get it out of my system. But I'm seething talking about bloody referees making bad decisions. On that occasion, and I'll talk about last night, okay, I've missed out Wolves, bad performance, everything else. You know, it was just one of those games, we move on. We come to the Palace game, we set up right, we bring in some fresh legs, you know, change it a little bit, see what, get Dan Jumer in, let him get, get in an opportunity to stake a claim to actually challenge Dwight McNeil. It looks like that's going to be, he might have got that place anyway because Dwight McNeil might be out for our next game against Aston Villa. We'll soon find out about on that subject because it was a bad injury, it looked, like, looked a bad injury, but it looks like it's a swollen ankle or some sort, which Sean Dyson says, so hopefully not as bad as it looked. Um, so fingers crossed on that. So Dan Jim may have that opportunity. Came in last night, played well to... For certain periods of the game, um, he tired off a little bit later on. He wasn't as impactive in the second half as he was in the first half. He had some opportunities, and we should have, again, <laughs> like most of our season, we should have put them in the back of the net. But as per usual, uh, we, you know, it's not happened again. But you know, it's a nil-nil draw, and it starts. You know, the game is absolutely peeing it down. Thousands of Evertonians again travelling on a Thursday night, start of the new year. You know, I, I bow to you. I mean, I don't go to away games, I go to home games. But the support you guys go week in, week out, home and away, get right behind the team. Re sunshine, rain, sleet, snow, wind, anything. You just go and get behind the team. And... You've got nothing more to ask for, really. You know, the team can go out there and they perform better. But all I'm talking about is, again, the VAR decision. 
which is one of the worst I think I've ever seen. And it's not just because I, it's, I'm being biased, being an Evertonian, you know, and it's against my team. It was a shocking decision. It was a good tackle. There was no malice. There was nothing in it to indicate that it was a sending off. Even the referee on the field who was yards away from it and could see it, thought it was a perfectly legit challenge, legit uh, tackle, got the ball, pulled away. There was, and it played on. We had got to the other and it got into a position of an opportunity to score. Obviously, it didn't happen that way. And then went out of play. Porson's in his ear. Oh, uh, oh, I, what, oh, come and have a look at this. Nah, that's a sending off. And this is where referee on the field needs to be stronger. And as I mentioned, they're not being stronger, they're weak. They're taking it on board. They're thinking, oh, because it's in real time for them. And they think that was fine challenge and everything was fine with it. You've got the good old VAR who can go on their little video and can go fast and slow it down. And then they freeze frame the position where the foot was stood was high and it was going towards Klein uh, leg and or shin. And didn't even go near it. It may have touched him a little bit, but there was no malice, no nothing. And he shows, he freeze frames the little bit where this is the studs going in. And when you see that, it does look a bad challenge. So the referee has no, yes, he's sent off. And it's and, and I believe uh, Everton have put an appeal in uh, to get that rescinded. Now hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed. But. It goes back to the story I mean, we talk about Man City, the penalty decision on that game, the Tottenham game with the foul, <laughs> supposedly, which led to uh, Dominic Calvert's goal in the Tottenham game, got us back into it at that point, supposedly at that point. Uh, and that, again, referee on the field saw it, thought it was fine, and linesman did in that game. But good old, I think it was Oliver this time, in the VAR truck, miles away in Stockley Park. Oh, um, I've slowed it down. That's a foul. You need to bring it back. So you see. <laughs> so again, you know, we see it. We watch it on the TV. We see the replays. We see everything. And what we see is that's a perfectly legitimate fa uh, tackle. It's a challenge between two players just because he's gone down. It's a 50-50 um, tackle. It's what it is. The penalty hits his hand. And he's trying to protect himself. What else could he bloody do? So you see, and it's getting more and more week in, week out. And we talk about, you know, Wolves in early in the season. They had some really bad calls as well. And of course, they're doing, you know, their demonstrate banners, you know, and protesting and everything else. And it's just like, when's it going to end? I've not once today, nobody from PGMOL come out and said, oh, you know, apologise like they always do um, for, for this mistake or, or are they admitting it is a mistake yet? Looks like they've not they're doing it, probably not saying anything because they think they're right still which which every, one man and his, every man and his dog who watched that game last night knows that that was not a sending off offence and this is where it's got to a stage now where the game's gone and as I mentioned, I've been supporting Everton up most of my life. I've seen I've been the ups, downs, ups, downs, ups, down. And as we continue going in the wonderful roller coaster that is for this season and trying to understand, you know, not just the, what the team's doing. And they're going, you know, they in, you know, we're having bumps in the road. We've lost three on the bounce. We've just got a draw last night. Okay, so we're still in the the draw for the fourth round so you know there's still an opportunity to get to the next round of the, of the FA Cup but for me the game's gone and it's not just you know I will continue to support the Blues I'll continue to go and watch them I'll continue to be as passionate as driven as as I can be you know I, I think about Everton every day it's always a thought in my mind every second of the day 
you know, wanting to know what's going to happen with the takeover, how the stadium's doing, and, you know, and the 10 point deduction that's ongoing as well. When we're going to find out more about, you know, is it going to be rescinded or something like that? For me, these decisions are not just, okay, affecting Everton, um, they're affecting other clubs within the Premier League, but something has to give. And it just feels like, we can keep on banging our head against the wall. We can keep on saying, please, do something about it. Sort this out. But they're not listening. They don't care. And as much as they can release audio and they can put do this once every few weeks, they can put something out there and show a few games where if, if there's been instances in to trying to explain what's happened. Um, but we need more than that. I think my personal view is VAR needs to be taken, put to one side, and left for the rest of the season, and let the referees on the field do their job. And if they make mistakes, they make, they, they make mistakes, and we can be still critical of that, but at the end of the day, you know, this VAR is not working. It's not fit for purpose. The people in that box are not fit for purpose. And if you think about it, the referees are the same referees. They all know each other. They're all pals or everything else, and they're all going to back each other up as well. And... and you know, when we talk about, you know, from my point of view, what I feel about, you know, the Premier League and regarding the the breach in rules and our 10-point deduction and my feeling that they are a corrupt organisation, and I will be honest enough to say that, and they just care about the six clubs, the teams at the top end of the table, who's going to bring the more money in for them. And they will, you know, something like Manchester City with 115 uh, breaches, um, you know, it's going to get heard. Is it later this year? I believe, uh, um, but you know, it's going to be till until next season when we find find out if they've have breached and what what kind of punishment they're going to get. And if you you know, and they seem to be, oh, we'll leave you for a bit. You know, why aren't you doing it now? Why why aren't you not got an independent regu- independent commission going? F- you know, investigating them now. With Everton's case, it was like, that was it. Straight on, let's investigate you. And now, we all know the full story here, but we got that going on. We've got a takeover going on, where is it going to actually happen? And if it doesn't happen, could we be into going into administration? Because we'll have no body wanted to take over the football club. It's back in Mishiri's hands. Can he afford to keep the club going? I don't know. So we got that scenario. And of course, good old 777 partners still out there in their other clubs that they have all got problems. I think it was Genoa today, I believe. There was a story about that. And, you know, are they the right people for, for Everton Football Club? So you see, you know, we've got this points deduction going on. We don't know when that's going to come. So with the Premier League corruption, so with, with so much that they care about, they care more about the money from the TV contracts and the TV deals throughout the world and from the Premier League and getting all this money. The Premier League, you know, like Sky paying all this money and, uh, and TNT paying, you know, all this money to show Premier League football. And they are, as TV companies, of course, it's a TV spectac- spectacle, Obviously, they want the top teams. That's where they're going to get their audience from. And if you're not just in the you know UK based, if you're worldwide based um, in America or Australia or wherever else, and you're a fan of those teams, you want to see those teams. And if if they are not there, the ratings will drop. And that means those TV stations like NBC and ABC or affiliates like that, they will they'll pull out. They will not buy the deal. They won't get, they won't want the TV deals. They won't pay the money to the Premier League. They won't say, we want to do it because of those clubs. And the simple Liverpool, you know, I'm going to say the main three teams, Liverpool, Manchester United and Arsenal. Chelsea and Man City, Man City are, you know, they just keep on winning, but they probably have got, you know, a few fans. But Man City, Tottenham and Chelsea, they are not, if you look at history, 
you know, you can understand the main faint fan bases, uh, the major fan bases are going to be those three clubs. And that's what it's all about. They get more, they get more games on the TV. They get more, you know, they're shown more than anybody else. And that's what it's all about. And if they can have, you know, a great title chase, they will create a story for it. They'll make it, you know, they'll make it in a way that they want to drive this title chase right to the end of the season so it gets bums on seats. You in your in your living room watching the watching them games, getting into it. And if you're a Liverpool fan or a United, Arsenal, Man City and Chelsea, talk, but predominantly if it's those three clubs and Man City included in this because they're probably going to be up there, Tottenham maybe as well at the season, they're going to create... And if they feel that one team's going further and further away from the other teams, like Man City, as an example, they're going to try and find ways to pull them back to get Liverpool, who seems to be their favourites at the moment. Let's get Liverpool. Liverpool need to be winning lots of titles. And it seems to be all the producers or editors or people on Sky TV seems to be Liverpool fans. And it seems to be week in, week out, when I do watch a game on there, um, if it's not Everton in it at the moment, I don't really watch most other football matches, except Everton, of course. But if there's a game on there that I see, it's just it feels like watching LFC TV. And that's just how I feel. And that's how it feels week in, week out. And it's just, you know, they can change the narrative. And the only way you can change the narrative is by the referees. And this is where you, I could talk about corruption within the Premier League. Is there a bit of corruption going on within the PG MOL? They'll deny it. They'll say, no, that's not the case. You know, we're, we're doing what we do. We're doing for the best, you know, following the rules, following the laws that we, we have in place. But obviously, after last night's game, there was, you know, several incidences where not just the Calvert-Lewin uh, sending off, Beto was manhandled in the box and should have been a penalty. But supposedly somebody said that they checked that and it was done in a few seconds. How can you check something with a few seconds? I thought that was not a penalty. The, the player was bear-hugging him. Absolutely wrapped his arms around him and not allowing him to even get a shot on to, get a shot in. And he just, he just decided to go down. So there's another decision. And there was another challenge from, I think, was it Anderson? I think earlier on in the game, when he fouled, I think it was Beto, and got him on the shin. What happened with that one? So I um, digress anyway, I'm sorry. But I'm just saying, what is actually going on with, you know, we the Premier League think, you know, it's we're not, you know, they think we're not corrupt. But they're not saying anything. They don't talk. They don't communicate. You know, Andy Burns put stuff out there, you know, asking him questions about the mitigating factors of why, you know, we went over the 20 million you know, in our, uh, you know, 20 million in our uh, finances. You know, they were mitigating factors. And of course, you know, we could talk about, you know, the Russian situation where we lost 220 million pounds for stadium rights and everything else when the Russian, when the war with Ukraine started. And today, is it X Bing or something that has a link to Russia? you know, is actually going to be a shirt sleeve sponsor for Chelsea. And the government and the Premier League have accepted, just, oh yeah, that's fine, there's no issues with that. But they have a link to Russia. So what's that all about? We have Chelsea here who spends a billion pounds in, in, in transfers and basically, and then gets this, you know, oh, we can get a shirt sponsor. It'd probably be enough that they'll wipe out, you know, all the P PSRs, which, uh, you know, are, are on them at the moment because of the amount of money that they're spending. You know, are they being investigated? Is there any kind of, uh, any kind of uh, chase on that? It's got, you know, nothing. Don't hear anything. And, it, and again, I put it to the national media. They don't talk about it. They like talking about Everton and all the problems we have because it's easy it's easy target. They don't mind Everton being kicked out because they're nobody. They'd rather be relegated and put in a championship. That's what they want to do. 
and basically that's what it is. And then they decided, oh, what's what you know, decisions that we've had of late from the referees and and that sort of thing. No wonder why we call out corruption there, because something's not right. It seems to be convenient that it seems to be. Let's keep on punishing Everton in so many ways because we actually bother. We actually shout, you know, sound it out. We actually stand up and say something about it. We actually put, get it out there. We actually, you know, protest and demonstrate. We actually do think social media. We we actually do banners and cards and lots of great, lots of stuff to get how we feel because we have been wronged. Yes, we breached the rule, but there are other clubs further up the table that have done worse than us and nothing is happening with them at the moment. It's just like, leave it be. You have a situation at the moment where Nottingham Forest could have breached their, their uh, PSR and that will be announced in the next week or so. I, we'll find out. You know, hopefully we'll be all right with our accounts going into 22-23. So we'll see what happens with that. But, you know, I should be okay from from hearing from Paul. The Esk has said that we're, we're we're fine, so that should be okay moving forward. But and that's why we feel these decisions are being made, and it just seems that they're too convenient. And it seems to be ever since the Super League thing was around. And the former CEO of Everton got up and actually, or Everton made a statement and absolutely ripped into these clubs and should have get points deducted and relegated and all the rest of it and actually called it out. The club called it out, which we're trying to kind of, kind of at the moment with the decision last night, calling out, you know, the referee so- association last night, calling out. Someone Dice was being very, didn't really want to say what you really want, really felt about it, but somewhere at the club needs to be shouting this out because it's it's getting week in week out and it's uncalled for, and yes, and it just feels that what happened in that that few days where six clubs could have left the Premier League and gone into this Super League, and basically we had a go, we stood up for it, and we you know said it was all wrong and something should be done about it to these six clubs, and it just feels like. Either the six clubs have been in the ears of the Premier League and said, look, if you, you know, we don't like what they're saying, we need to, you know, punish them in any way possible, in any game or anything like that. You know, let's try not make it. Let's make sure that, you know, they continue to perform and get results and do all the rest of it. Every so often we'll give them, you know, give them bad, you know, decisions, you know, and then do nothing about it. I, maybe I'm just being a conspiracy theorist here. Maybe I'm all wrong, but it's just how I feel at this moment in time. But I'll just say the game's gone. And for me, if it continues to go in this way, if they don't sort this out within the referee situation and the, the Premier League in general, we need an independent regulator. We all know that. That needs to happen. Hopefully it'll happen after the um, general election. It needs to be put in place because the Premier League needs to be investigated um, the PGMO needs to be investigated. I feel that they they're ruining ruining the game in this country. Uh, VAR can be used properly. We need better referees referees that can do the, the VAR job and not what they can do on the field. Something has to give here, um, and I'll leave it at that. Really, anyway, that's just my take, just my feelings at the moment. Um, I hope some hope hopefully. Something will happen in the future, but it just doesn't feel like it's going to get sorted. We don't hear anything from PGMO, MOL. They don't talk that much. They're, not communic- they're trying to bring Simbins in and all sorts of crap, trying to make the game more. That's, I don't know, I'll give up. Anyway, on that note, um, yes. So we move on to the Aston Villa game, which is uh, next Sunday. Um, hopefully, Decorah will be back for that game. We'll find out more about Dwight McNeil. Hopefully, he will. Most hopefully, he'll be well. You know, a few a few extra days because it's nice to have a break um, after all the games throughout December. Um, so it'd be nice for the players to have a break. Oh my, you know, refresh and get themselves ready for the Villa game, and we can go again. Um, hopefully, get another good performance in. It's going to be a tough one against Villa. 
uh, we're doing really really well at the moment so yeah so that's the next one um i just want to thank everybody again for listening to my podcast and now a video form so this will be also on youtube so if you want to see me and the rubbish behind me then that then you know feel free it'll be great to have you seeing me instead of listening to me all the time um or listen to or do both i don't know might as well be interesting um but yes um well, thanks again for the support as usual um uh, without it i don't think i would um be doing this up to now i started in june i think it was and i've got so many great listen great people out there who are following me who listen to what i do listen to my content and all i do is just ramble on about everton and i just go off adjacent to different things but i love doing it positive or negatively um if it's coming on here for a rant like i have done today about the refereeing and everything else about the premier league and all that sort of thing then you know that's one thing um i'll come on here talk about anything positive about the club like the stadium and and the team when they have been performing well and and all the good stuff from that um but i you know i'll i'll always appreciate the feedback that you give me and always appreciate the support that you're giving me because i want to grow this i want to get it you know to the next level i want you know do it more often um i want to add this is why i'm trialing the video doing a video and also um just i'm doing some podcasts as per usual because i just want to grow it and to get as many of you guys just to listen in but also in the future at some point and i need to do it um find the time is to be more interactive so what i want to do is to have a second pro uh podcast second show which will allow you on to the show and we can interact talk about it talk about the blues talk about the now but also talk about the past talk about your memories and everything else that you know comes to with everton we're moving away from goodison in the next couple of years and what it'd be like what the memories of being at goodison park and what the best games that you've been to or what memory you can remember at that time and you know all those sort of things so that's what i want to do in the future so keep an eye out keep keep an ear out and see and, and you know look for i would look forward to when when that day arrives so anyway on that note thank you again for listening for watching um i will do another podcast next monday um all i can say is take care have a great week um and I'll see you next Monday week, Monday week, sorry, Monday week. Um, so take care and bye-bye.